OTA is live, yes, gamers. Before eight claw. Ah, flip the negative zone. To the left, to the left. Elysium is better for them than me. I think I think true, yeah. I think I could wait on the Ant-Man as well. Because um I can play four plus Ant-Man next turn and kinda wait to commit it. Yes, next OTA is May 23rd. They just thought they were safe on the right, gamers. My mighty hand. Behold my mighty hand! It is the my channels by giving bits rather than subbing as a content creator would you please share your opinion on style is it better worse or the same um I guess if it was an identical amount of financial support like you were gonna send five dollars via bits or spend five spend five dollars on bits or five dollars on a sub I personally would prefer the sub it allows me to more easily identify and chat at a glance people who are who are regularly supporting, and you as the viewer get to build up um, tenure on the channel with sub streaks and emotes to join the Discord server and stuff like that. So pound pound for pound, I would prefer a sub to uh, to bits. Yes, the OTA was exactly as leaked. Oh, We're gonna write down that start, because that was the that was a perfect first game. 602 for the start. But now five dollars in bits versus a gifted sub. I'd rather have the bits. Bits bits are better than a gifted sub. I'll never say no to your buddy, but I'd rather I'd rather have bits. All I'll, all I'll say is 99 times out of 100 when I feel compelled to uh, remove a subscriber from chat, they were a gifted sub basically every time.
Hey, Boomer Slang, thanks for the primer, appreciate it. I actually don't have a metric on number of gifted subs that turn into actual subs later. Don't, I don't have that easily accessible, unfortunately. What if there was a trolley headed down the track and it's going to give you 500 bits and hit one person, but you can pull the lever and it will kill five people, but give you three gifted subs. Do you pull the lever? Chat, I'm not a corporation. I would never pull that lever. spot here. It could be about to get Ultron, obviously. I oh, glad he has an LLC. That's true. We are an LLC. And they can't Ultron center, so they'd have to Ultron right or left. If they Ultron left, I'll have enough to beat it here. I think, I think I'm winning all of it, yeah? Ship it. Oh no! I think we're still winning the middle. Cope. Nocturne, Nocturne might have just fucked us yet. Uh, we tie middle? No, we lose to the buff! No! Ultron buff! No! Hubris. If Doctor and hadn't fucked us here, we don't want. Because Marvel would have given us 12. Doctor cosplaying as Martyr, yeah. Ultron confirmed greater than Claw, yeah. Should we upgrade this? So that way we're more likely to get boosters? Yeah. Go for gold. Wanda! What makes it more likely to get boosters? If you are missing boosters towards the next upgrade on a card, it is twice as likely to get boosters at the end of a game. So I upgraded that claw to be 38 out of 40, meaning it's missing boosters towards its next upgrade, so we'll be more likely to get it now. Irritado, thank you for the 18 months. I would be incredibly surprised if Ultron is now a good card. I think Ultron will likely still struggle to put enough points into play to be competitive against decks like Hella. And I also think they buffed Leech this week as well as an explicit direct counter. It's not gonna stop people. It's not gonna stop people from playing it because Ultron's a fan favorite. But I will be surprised if it ends up being competitive. You talked about what happened at Microsoft Studio this week. Not sure how you pay attention to console games. I only pay attention to consoles that make games that I can't play on my PC. I, I, my eight-year-old 
once asked me, why do we have PlayStations and not an Xbox, Dad? And I told him the truth, which was, well, any Xbox game you can just play on the computer. To which he then said, well, why would anybody have an Xbox then? And he's eight years old and he understood. So like, I don't, I don't know what the rest, what the excuse for the rest of you is. I think it's this. And then we just uh, tee up the onslaught in the middle next turn. Although, I, pr I probably need to set up Cosmo, yeah? I think it's this, actually. So the bots are two. Patriot, Patriot, Blue Marble is five. So they get 28 on the right. So can't compete there. I can't beat Ultron left, can I? Ultron left puts them to 22 there. We would have won if we didn't play around Ultron there, right? We would have just put Onslaught in the middle and moved Nocturne over. We win the game. Ultron is a huge fan favorite card. I expect it's going to be immensely popular until people figure out that it's not as strong. That's not a strong thing. Maybe it will be wrong. Maybe it will be a strong thing and it'll stick around. The, the theoretical maximum in your best draws is not, not that big. Patriot as a deck is fine. I think there's a number of like little Patriot Mockingbird disruptive style decks that are very, very good and reasonable. I definitely, definitely say, definitely say that uh, Patriot is solid. Oh, I fully expect to see a bunch of content creators. Ultron is great now, Tanks. That doesn't, that, that's like, that's like a given, honestly. Ah! 
How is the opponent playing Darkhawk? Isn't that nerfed? Asking the real questions. Locked out of Marvel's bonus on Sakaar feels real bad. All systems go. I go up to 24 in the middle. I think we're just torched otherwise. Sleep. I think you could tell a lot about people's card evaluation skills. If you go back through content and takes on social media over the last month and see who's talking about Loki being too good and which people were talking about Darkhawk being strong. There are lots. We've been singing the praises of Darkhawk here for a little while. And while he didn't have good stats of the public trackers, well, he didn't have beat it. wasn't popular on the public trackers. His stats were good. It's very validating for me from a card evaluation standpoint that like second era is like, yeah, actually you're, the data says you were very right, Jeff. Darkhawk was in fact very strong. District decks game. I want to play my deck. I think I'm all like in here. People just hate losing to their own cards. Yep, it's why Baron Zemo and Loki are both hated. Completely agree. Prioritize getting her down. There's a chance they just blow this up this turn, so I'm going to play Nocturne to the right. So that way on the off chance they don't blow this up and they just do more setup, I'll have priority to Cosmo the center next turn. I didn't care. I think I think it's just I think it's just cat. I think it's just uh, sorry, I think it's just Miss Marvel. Now this chat, this is both funny and cruel. So the Shuri bonus is attached to the location. So Quake here stops Shuri from buffing their card because we have priority.
That was a sweet, that was a sweet game. This deck is a really neat mix of cards. I like, I like a lot of what this deck is doing. Got some fun, some fun bits to it. I love, I love the Angela package. So like Nocturnes are the cards I was most excited about. Hey Todd, good afternoon. Matthias, thanks for the Baker's Dozen. Welcome back. Quake, Quake, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Twitch chat a pat on the back. Quake was such a good suggestion for this deck. Just fit exactly what we wanted to be doing. Speaking about exactly what we want to be doing, chat, I want to be making some money. So I'm gonna push the money button and I'll see the non-subs in 120 seconds. We're gonna play some more of this deck when we get back. Thanks for hanging out, don't go anywhere. the menu music to vibe for a minute. Oh, I got my Psylocke. Oh, I got my Psylocke. Oh, I'm so excited. We're definitely gonna have to play with her at some point today. Gorgeous piece of art. I, I think it might be best to slot for her chat. Yeah, I think it might be best to slot. Was the all pixel deck yesterday also all different borders? Yes. The gold, I mean, the gold's basically always better. I just wanted to show off both since I have both. It, it looks good in ink. Better, better in gold. I tweet does such a good piece of art. Why do you seem to think Ultron won't good enough? It seems like a substantial buff. Under absolutely 100% ideal circumstances, Ultron's one point buff means Ultron puts 28 points into two paths and puts two, three, four, five, six, 15 points into another. I do not think two 28 point paths and one 15 point path is going to be good enough a lot of the time. Also, in a variety of other draws where exactly everything doesn't come together perfectly, you're gonna do significantly worse than that. Past all of that, they just buffed Leech and people are looking to play Leech. People are looking to play Leech to beat Hella. So you are incidentally going to catch Flack playing Ultron from people playing tech cards to beat Hella in the short term at the very least. Nah, I don't think you want Psylocke in C2. Maybe, maybe it's worth testing with Leech, but honestly, you probably want to Leech on four most games, not three. You want to give them more time to draw Hella. shocking to me how many times I've had to fucking say this because of gamers. Can we stop using the big bad distinction 
Every new card is a big bad. We literally had a series downgrade this year and we'll have another before summer. And then this is my typical, well, issue them a correct statement and then we'll ban them from posting further comments on my channel because I'm gonna be honest, they're probably gonna snap back saying something that's also factually incorrect again and I don't wanna deal with that. We'll give them, we'll give them some correct information and then we'll, we'll move on with our day. Apologies to Ender for running down the timer while we moderate a YouTube comment. Isn't them ranting in your comments good for the algorithm? My understanding is it would be beneficial for my content if I let people spout random non-true bullshit in my comments. However, I think doing that would also make my comment section worse, like a lot of YouTube comment sections are atrocious, so I'd rather not have them there rather than have them there and make slightly more money while they make my comment section worse. I mean, it, it actually doesn't matter. It's just, just did they win their 25 percenter is the only thing that matters here. Minions to me. changes in today's OTA were bad, but I do think it's both baffling and frustrating to me that Hella has been doing this for half a year and we're just like, you know what? This is good. This is good, interesting gameplay and Marvel snaps a better game because this exists. Like I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe the Hella players can explain it and they love it and there's a ton of them and they will be sad if they change it, but I just, e even when you win, it's not interesting. I think unnecessary nerfs are bad. I mean, Hella is consistently a top performing card. Cons consistently. It's been, it's been at the top of the metagame for literally months. Point, point 0.17 average cubes. Here's Darkhawk on the public tracker. Point, point 0.112. Yeah, yeah, the, t the tough part is no hella changes today means that there aren't hella changes coming for a minimum of two weeks now. The soonest, the soonest hella can get adjusted is May 23rd.
Healing Hell is easy. You just have to pray that they draw bad or discard it. <laughs> that's, that's true, you know. That is a legal Marvel Snap play that you can make. How would I change Hella? If, if I was given free reign from second dinner to change Hella, the very first thing I would do is make sure second dinner has my direct deposit information because if I'm gonna do their job, they better fucking well pay me for it. Such is my judgment. What is the opponent doing? Weird tribunal stuff, it looks like. Can someone help me understand what changed to make Hella a dominant card? Two, two things were changed to make Hella a dominant card. The first is they changed Blade from being random. It's not, it's not the meta at all, Gap. The first is they changed Blade from being random to being targeted. The second is they printed Corvus. Those are the two things that changed Hella. That's been a common question. People have been coming back for drops and something like, okay, what changed with this card? She was a meme for a long time. They made her they made her more more consistent. Uh, there will not be an OTA review for a review video for today's OTA because it was leaked in advance. reasonable gap to say that removing Thanos as the top deck left room for Hela to be on top because the Thanos deck was just so much far and away better than absolutely everything else. I just don't, I don't think that's a reasonable position. Like you would, you could, you could say that about literally anything else that became a good or playable deck after Thanos left. What are the odds? What what are the odds they What are the odds they try and play here? High? I think high. Unlucky. Something very clear. 
all of my arguments about adjusting Hella are not purely related to her play rate. The card fucking sucks shit to play against, whether she's too good or terrible. The only difference between too good and terrible is that she'd be every, you know, 10th or 20th game instead of every, every, you know, 5th game. Or sometimes multiple games in a row. She's just not, it's just not a good gameplay experience that she generates. If I do this, and I do this, and I do this, and I do this. Based on the public tracker information, there is also a compelling stats-based argument worthy. to adjust Tella. For the, for the record, there is also a compelling stats-based argument to adjust her. But they, even even that aside, it's not the only one. Is what all I am saying. Man, I we've been getting bodied, but it also feels like it also feels like we keep losing these really close games where our opponent's draws keep coming together perfectly, and we're just coming up short. Like I don't think we've drawn Claw or Onslaught since like the first game we played with the deck. Now this is kind of fun. We'll quake and put Tardax in the Nebula path. I forgot to snap on one because we were complaining. Let's let's quake Tardax into the Nebula path. So if they want to stop Nebula from going up, they get a bunch of randoms. three drop next turn so I could go two drop three drop and then drop onslaught in the middle to make this big and have marble punch on each side Drop, but uh, change of plans. Pivot! Pivot! Nice sandcastle you got there, bud. Sure would be a damn shame if something happened to it. Okay, I think I play Darkhawk instead of Onslaught because I don't want to roll Destroyer and lose the game. <laughs> I 
Did you Jeff left in case of Carnage? No, I Jeffed left because I felt like they were more likely to play right and I wanted to play my bigger thing on the right. And castle appropriately kicked. So, silence. All of the stats on untapped for this season so far are worthless because we don't actually have stats for this season. We have stats mixed this season and last season because they didn't reset their data tracking at the start and you can't do custom reaches. It's one of, it's one of the things I've tried to ask though before, but it's like all of the metagame and win rate percentages for stuff, you just, we won't be able to look at it until after the OTA today because we need a fresh slate. Yeah, it's not, it's not just this season. Latest patch is this season and last season. to 50-50, but 101 and 3, we take those. Do this actually so we can move two out of here. Oh, we don't have to worry about killmonger, it's nice. What a game! That's the one I have. I think it was a. Uh, I guess it was a season pass one, if I recall. I don't know that I'm changing Great Web because um, if I move Nocturne here now because of pulled Cosmo, I can't miss Morphle into it. deck seems to be a lot better when we draw Onslaught chat. Someone, if someone can write that down for the note takers. Casserole is a community term for winning all three lanes.
I think I want to save Quake for Luke's bar shenanigans. Rather than trying to Oscorp Tower. I think patience will be rewarded here. I'm gonna move Jeff to try and play for priority next turn to try and mess him up with Luke's bar. What a game! Deadpool is eight. This beats. Oh, I do have priority. We could flip the bar. Yeah. Probably just this, yeah? Well, I, I guess I need to put a point in the middle. So I can't have the Ant-Man. Is Quake our savior, Gamer? Then Quake's our savior. Also one, if we don't have the quake, we could have played to beat Deadpool here and here. Would have also worked with the onslaught. And then we lose wherever they null and we win the other. Ultron is a huge fan favorite character. You should definitely expect it to be very popular. What a game! Destroy's already been pretty popular. It's easily the deck I've played the most against Enough today. Set, Even before the OTA went live. Central instead of getting rid of instead of getting rid of limbo. I 
I could also... I could also do this. So that way Grand Central doesn't pull my... I think I do this actually. open it pulls on slot yeah but then my angel is smaller yeah We're finally hitting some average variants with it, so we're going to play this for one more set, and then we'll move on to some Cerebro 2 after. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. Plenty more Marvel staff coming up today. I'm going to run to the restroom really quick, subs, BRB. John and Mac, thank you for the 11 months. Welcome back. Oh, we have a new, we have a new shop. Lovely. Oh, no. They stuck a Justina variant. In a shitty bundle? Come on, bro. That's so disappointing. Justina's my favorite artist in the game. And I've gotten all of her other stuff. But just like... 80,000 collectors, 90,000 collectors tokens. No, it's not a bad raid, it's just collectors tokens are actually worthless to me. Actually, actually, factually worthless. That's so disappointing. Is 
tokens are worthless, a Jeff Hoagland issue, or a general issue. It, it's an issue for everyone who spends a good deal of money on Marvel Snap. You just end up, end up incidentally with not caring about tokens or spotlight keys. The only, the only currency that matters is credits and gold, and gold only matters because it turns into credits. Because the end, the end game whaling in Marvel Snap is you want to split cards for premium splits. And to do that, you need... Which, I wish I could turn my collector's tokens into credits at a sub somewhat reasonable rate. I would definitely convert a good chunk of them. I'll probably end up buying that, but I'm going to be annoyed about it. It's, ba it's basically like buying a 2400 gold variant. Does that, to set the line, chat, I, I broke down all the numbers in my economy video. But it loosely costs 80 USD per month to get every single card that releases in Snap. So basically, anyone who spends $100 or more per month in Marvel Snap is going to incidentally build up a giant pile of tokens and spotlight keys because you're spending more than is necessary to get every card. So you're just gonna like have copious amounts of the resources that turn into cards only. That $80 counting pure gold to get spotlight keys. I break down what spending that $80 entails in the video. Check it out. I'm not gonna give you more than that. I want you to click the link. What resources do you buy to get you spotlight keys? Credits turn into spotlight keys, chat. Progressing up the collection level track. If you stop spending money on everything cold turkey except the season pass, how long would it take you to run out of resources getting every new card on release? Uh, ge genuinely... I think it would likely take me years at this point. Because you gotta remember, it takes 2.5 keys per new card or 6,000 tokens. So I loosely have 15 cards worth of tokens. And then I probably have 80 spotlights divided by 2.5. So I have roughly 50 cards worth of resources built up currently. And then after having 50, 50 cards worth of resources built up currently, I will also have the resources I incidentally acquire not spending money along the way. So almost a year's built up or maybe a little more. Oh, I had a Cosmo. That didn't matter. Everything is Cosmo. Awkward game. We are done. Escaped. The Jane bundle is very good for people who want collector's tokens. The Jane, the Jane bundle is very good for people who want collector's tokens. It is better than the 1500 gold for 1200, right? You just had an ad, like a full screen video ad just played and for how long, Tally Shark? Or like one of the little pop-up ads that Twitch puts in popped up above or below or to the side of the screen. That doesn't actually obscure the gameplay. screen video ad for 15 seconds weird we just we just finished a two minute ad block before that so maybe you're twitch bugged but it's weird that it would bug for you at the very end of it instead of the very start 
Did you did you just load the stream, Tally Shark, or have you been hanging out all day? If you just came into the stream, you might have caught a pre-roll. It is, a, it is a quality cosmo. Speaking of, I think we put the dog on the left here. Yes, the 30 day gold bundle just starts 30 days from when you buy it. Not a, not a dumb question at all, very reasonable question. I think it's this. We can turn off limbo next turn. Yes, if you buy multiple gold passes at one, it increases the amount of days you have the gold pass for. Like, my gold pass says it runs for another hundred some odd days. I do not intend to play Ultron on the day that they buffed Leech, no. I also don't think Ultron's a particularly compelling build around. Putting Patriot, Mystique, Blue Marvel in your deck is sure. The 300 gold deal was a one-time buy and that's it. No, it's every time you buy it, you get 300 gold. They get to think one extra key to get Celine. So we actually had this exact discussion in my subscriber discord server last night. And I think the list of cards that aren't worth spending one key to guaranteed get is really short. And I think Selene is on it. Like, I don't, I don't, I would be absolutely floored if they reworked or changed her in a meaningful way. And I, she's just, she's awful right now. Are you concerned leagues will ruin the turn one staff casualness of the Proving Grounds? I don't try to try not to spend too much time stressing out about things that probably don't really matter and ultimately are outside of my control. So we'll cross that bridge when we get there. You need to be subbed to join the Discord server. My Discord is only for Twitch subscribers and YouTube members, yes. I do not have it in me, neither the time nor the mental fortitude required to moderate a fully public Discord server. We have, you know. At any given point, like right now, my channel has uh, 3,039 concurrent subscribers. So that Discord server, even being semi-private, has, you know, 2,000 people in it an average week. And that's, that's plenty. I have... I think my stats say we usually have like somewhere between 600 and 1,000 people that read it week to week and like somewhere between two and 300 that chat between all the channels. It's a good, good sized community that has, doesn't have to be moderated really because people who subscribe know to behave. 
Does the Discord have a shillionaire room? It has Beverly Shills. Which is certainly the place that you want to be. Oh, god damn it. Seriously? Of all the cards, Tardex. Someone asked, what is your background before doing Marvel Snap? Uh, I traveled to play Magic the Gathering competitively for a number of years. I ho hold the incredibly coveted title of most SCG Open top eights without a win. Which for those who aren't familiar, that was an independent tournament series in the Midwestern and Eastern United States that had events that ranged from hundreds up to thousands of players. If you haven't been watching our Nocturne gameplay this week, something to be aware of is my Nocturne is really prone to violent tendencies, we found. She, uh... She enjoys fucking nerds up. It's been... It's been, it's been impressive, honestly. Your Nocturne is a sociopath. I'm, I'm genuinely concerned she could be a sociopath. Yeah. It's, uh... She don't, she don't fuck around, shit. Okay, so Claw gives me four, uh, plus five gives me 12 here and gives me 24 here. Did you feed her after midnight? She does kind of look like a gremlin, doesn't she? They have armor on the right? That would get me. Ah, ghost spider. Well played upon it. Wait. Oh, Cosmo. I was like, oh, wait, what? No, I have Cosmo. Rip. I went away and watched the video, but I didn't really understand is it turned gold into credits rather than mission refills? And the video explicitly says to do neither of those things. If you are interested in optimizing card acquisition in Marvel Snap, and you are a small spender or free to play player, the optimal thing to do is to convert all of your gold into collector's tokens via token Tuesdays or high token ratio bundles like the Jane bundle in the shop today. The best token Tuesdays bundle is the 1500 gold to 1200 tokens and the Jane bundle today is a better rate than that. Is it actually maybe it's slightly worse. The gold the it's actually slightly worse, yeah. The bundle is the Jane the Jane bundle is uh 2400 to 2000, so it's the same as 12 to 1. No, that's better. That is better. Math. Math. Not even once yet. That's better. I was thinking, I was thinking there used to be 1,400 for, right? Math, someone, someone double check. I'm, I'm bad at counting at the moment. It's slightly, slightly worse. Okay, got it. Not even once, math. I'm gonna get rid of the super flow here. you're looking to optimize and grow your Marvel Snap collection and find out exactly what works best, you should check out my economy video here where I cleanly lay out all the numbers for you. Two shots at an onslaught, keepers.
all of the other varying asterisk questions like should I spend 2,500 gold on credits to get a fourth key to guarantee a good Series 5 card? The answer to that question is, in actuality, you shouldn't have started opening when you couldn't guarantee it to begin with. But now that you've already made a bad decision, sure, that probably makes sense for you to make that swap. Maybe it's this, actually. It might be this. How often does this end in crushing disappointment? I mean, 19 on the left and a ton in the middle? I think they Odin? Yes, yeah, beats Odin. Behold my mighty hand. Are ye worthy? Victory. I playing Miss Marvel with all of the little moving cards is very satisfying. Claws, Claws are really solid, just generic good card now too. 12, 12 for five seems like a very appropriate number to be like, yeah, this is in consideration. He's probably, he's probably a card you even want to consider in, he's probably a card you just want to like consider in uh, just other decks where you're like, all right, I want a five drop. Claw tap in without any onslaught synergy. Avatar looks great. Love it. Victory. I was talking this morning about missing Lockjaw too, Dwight. I really, I really hope they like will finally address Hella and put him back. Because with Thanos getting addressed, they address Hella. It's just like a super reasonable card, I think. I'm gonna put Nebula into the Forge here, actually, so that way if they want to stop her from getting points, they have to fill their hand with clutter. This location's kind of mid for us. Kind of mid for everybody this game. I don't know if you talked about this as feedback to the devs or feel the same, but a person who's logging in every eight hours for the free booster upgrade, I wish the upgrades would prioritize the split you have that's the most upgraded so I'd stop getting a split I'm not currently upgraded. I agree, Sergeant Pepper Hands. But also, like, I feel like it's kind of dangerous for me to request that they do that because I'm already spending considerably more credits with the feature as is. And if the feature was guaranteed to put cards in there, I was going to upgrade nine times per day, I might actually go broke. So I haven't, I haven't passed that feedback along to the devs yet. And honestly, I'm not sure that I will. <laughs> I need, I need the, the variance to ration me. Oh, unlucky on the Cosmo. Really hoping to hit Claw here. Claw to Onslaught would be the nuts. Today's Marvel Snap Stream pre-recorded in front of a live studio audience. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Appreciate you being here. The Club.
Yeah? Yeah? I think Quake and Legion are my one and two for most underplayed cards in Marvel Snap right now, chat. They are so good. Wait, what? Are they like Odining? Uh, that ties the right. We are the future. Uh, we win the breaker. We win the breaker by one point. What a margin. Herself is a flavor win. I think I read some fan fiction about that one time. Probably not appropriate to share on stream though. Why is it gold? It is my greatest shame. Lugi with the 25 gifted subs. Holy crap. That is a, a big, big bomberino. New subscribers, you should make sure you pull up a seat in the Discord server. We got a super active and swell community in there. Lugi, thank you for your generosity. Happy afternoon, happy OTA day. Now, I do, I do have some bad news for folks in chat though. If you're a non-sub who just missed a gift sub on that massive bomb of gift subs, there's a chance you should reconsider if Marvel Snap is really the game for you because we now have empirical evidence that you are not particularly lucky. And not being lucky is like, it's, it's kind of yikes if you're going to play a card game. Gotta set rule, number one rule to level up, be lucky. Number number two rule, don't be unlucky. And you you appear to have failed at both of those things if you missed on, if you missed on Lugie's sub gift bomb there. Fenris making their own luck by spending Jeffrey Bezos dollars. Thank you for the primer, appreciate it. And Bobby Super, thank you for the seven months. Welcome back. Is this a on curve quake? I think so. Although the argument against on curve quake is, do we think they have other ongoing cards that I could mess up more later? Like, are they, are they a tribunal deck? It's close. I think I want to spend my resources here in case we curve out perfect. They could also just be playing magic and then it doesn't matter and I want to just play on curve. What does on curve mean? That's a really good question. So on curve in a card game like Marvel Snap refers to spending all of your resources each turn in the game. So this game, I've actually perfectly played on curve. I've spent w one energy on one, two on two, three on three, four on four, five on five. And your curve as you play Marvel Snap is something you want to actively be thinking about because it can kind of dictate 
will I have time to play this card later or should I play it sooner? They haven't done a whole lot here, but their linear draw probably outlinears us, meaning if we're not interacting with them, their numbers are probably bigger. If they just go Tribunal into, or Iron Man into Tribunal into Onslaught, they could get us here. Finally learned I could connect my Twitch to join the Discord channel. You certainly can. Oh, buddy old pal. Shaggy Shrek. Get fucking wrecked, gamer. Who's a good boy? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. The claw deserves his chance at gold. Red borders are for wieners. Thank you, duck. I think Sage could work in a bounce deck, maybe? My full cope answer is I'm most excited to try and play Sage inside of a... I'm most excited to try and play Sage inside of a Mr. Negative deck. It's the best Nocturne sub in this deck. People keep asking that and I don't know that I have a good answer off the end. It's probably just another three drop that you can play on curve. Yeah, Mobius is probably fine. Just put a, put another good three energy card in. Like, I think Mobius is an excellent answer. Uh, Storm could be okay. I can see that. I buy, I buy Storm for a dollar. Offer some utility. this and then I onslaught the middle last turn yeah sorry let's put nightcrawler in the middle to make the angela slightly bigger it's a free beam You want to onslaught right instead. So onslaught right would give me an extra five here, but it would take me down eight here. But losing eight here is probably fine, yeah? Ultron Death Killmonger, man.
You think they run Super Scroll based on what? Just a vibe because it beats our deck? Is the plus 60 shillings the only way people can get shillings? That's just a bonus collection that you can click on and there are browser extensions that auto claim them. That's true, higher sub tiers get slightly more. the entire rope to figure out there like do they have to take off their shoes and socks to count like my board was full and none of this could move in chat when you type at need ho they're in the fucking chat <laughs> all right i mean oh okay i'm gonna ban them and we'll we'll move on and play a game against someone else what a, what a miserable human being. To intentionally rope and then come into chat to point out that they're roping. I'm, going, I'm, I'm happy to give you that gold ticket. You need it much more than I do. <laughs> Holy crap. Chat, it is really rude to actual children to imply that that person was a child. That person is almost assuredly a 20 or 30 something who's just in a kind of miserable place in their life or has things not going their way. I do need to split the claw, I apologize. I forgot. Actual, actual children tend to not be mean-spirited and generally mean well. They are, they are not dicks intentionally. This person didn't stab me back. If I think got ice man, I'm gonna go split my claw and then we'll play one more. Escaped. Did that warrant a ban? Someone who came in here and intentionally roped me and then here's the thing, 2099. Someone who has the mindset of coming into my chat to mock roping me over something like that is 0% going to be a reasonable human being who adds value to my community. Just like the, the type of person you have to be for that to be a decision you make is a very specific kind of person. And if they're going to be miserable in that manner, they're going to be miserable in other manners, too. Infinity. Come on! Gold! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's fine. We're gonna we're gonna farm plenty of claw boosters, chat. We're gonna farm plenty of the card is very playable now. There will be plenty of claw splits in the future. So, and by, by the future, I mean right now is technically the future. 
this very moment is the future compared to what I what I just mentioned. I mean, well, that's, that's an upgrade, you know, it is it? Actually, this is, this is an interesting question. The black might be worse than the white. And the, the black doesn't pop. You just can't see it. If really, you need some kind of border. I also think I like Glimmer more than Stardust, generally. Again! Listen, Broad. Broad thinks he can crush the, the will of Hoaglandia's whales, Jet. I agree. It's very rude of members of this chat to message you in private and insult you because you came into my stream, roped me, and then laughed about it in my chat. If anybody wants to insult Nito, you better post it in public in my chat because fuck them, they're a miserable human being. Have the, have the stones to let them know how miserable they are in public. All right, uh, Claw. Oh, see, this is an easy miscommunication. I, I messaged Broad and said I needed gold on my Claw. So Ben pushed the gold tone flare button instead of the gold finish button. It was a, a simple miscommunication. I'll, ha I'll have to be more clear in the future, I think. So that's okay. That's okay. He's just he's just not it's just not meant to be chat. Buy at a dime for every time. Classic, classic Benjamin. You know, a lot of the decks I play tend to not be stellar into Project Pegasus, but this one's not bad. Do I... There's so many center locations that could mess me up with Cly. I think I just spew one energy here and just play these two out left and right. Is it a good time to buy Elsa? Elsa's a mostly playable card who's also not present in any top must-have meta decks. So, if you really like the idea of her, she's fine. Pick her up and be happy about it. But also, like, if you're asking on power level, no. Definitely not a power level thing. I am going to Quake in the center because if I draw Cosmo, I want to have priority going into next turn to Cosmo the left before they can blow it up. And Carnage on Curve, nothing we can do. That's not bad. It's not bad. Nothing to do this turn kind of sucks, though.
peek the claw auto deck next time you need a good laugh. We'll do Zapdos. Jeff, I spent 6,000 tokens on a card that brings me joy. How badly have I taked my competitive future? Am I a bad gamer now? Ask the real questions. Imagine, imagine being such a casual you buy cards for fun. I am a card game player and former Magic the Gathering player, which means I ensure that I've never played a game for fun in my life. If I ever finished a gaming session and I'm not seething with rage at the end of it, I know I fucked up. Did you go for Hope Summers, Mockingbird, or Iron Lad to start an empty collection? I think Hope Summers is probably the most flexible of those. You'll play a lot of Hope. She's, she's lovely. Built this before six, yeah. I assume you were never collection complete in Magic. I was collection complete on Magic Arena. physical magic the gathering cards i own uh a kiki jiki a restoration angel and a court of calling i own four birds of paradise and i own a foil copy of the card timeout Death off the claps by the head and consider. Our opponent doesn't believe in snapping. Which edition of Birds of Paradise? They are 8th edition Birds of Paradise with the borders painted black because these don't come in black bordered by default. And white borders are hideous. Need a place at a spell center sprite. I actually have a spell center sprite framed in my office somewhere. It's around here somewhere. That one's free, though. It's a good one to get for free. Like the Cosno the center here. You ever proxy cards after you left the tournament scene? No, I stopped playing Magic the Gathering because it stopped being fun. No, no desire to, to play more. Are white borders the pixel variants of Magic the Gathering? 1000%. They have Enchantress in their Destroy deck. Holy shit. It's good to know, I suppose. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should have, uh... Maybe I should have Ant-Man instead of Quake if I was going to Onslaught potentially on the last turn. Yeah, probably a lower... Well, so... They're supposed to be collection-level based matchmaking inside of proving grounds and silver to a degree so in, in theory unless they were in the queue for a really long time they shouldn't be hitting me victory they are sweating really aggressively i'm gonna give them their silver ticket i got ready to move on from this deck i really like this deck chat i think we're gonna play play more of this one at some point in the future look at that two claw upgrades already Beauteous.
They had an inked Wolverine from the Conquest shop a year ago. Okay, so they are someone who's played for a little while then. Good. Yeah, they're probably probably just someone that doesn't play a ton. Taking the proving guards pretty serious. I liked a lot of what this deck was doing. Uh, the claw definitely feels like a card that's going to be explorable as a generically good five drop. Onslaught felt clean. Onslaughting either Claw or Miss Marvel, even on their own, is really great. You know, you onslaught Miss Marvel, and he's basically a 17 power six drop. You onslaught Claw, he's 15. You hit both, and an Ant Man, God forbid, you're pumping out tons of points. Felt super, super de duper 